You're listening to Talk to Brazil with Tom Riach. Welcome to Talk to Brazil, the world's first English language internet radio program about business in Brazil, now in a podcast format. I'm Tom Riach and your host for the show. I'm talking from the city of Campinas, the state of Sao Paulo, Brazil. So when you talk to Tom, you talk to Brazil and the world. Today's guest is Scott Adams. Scott and I are connected ever since my startup as the Talk to Brazil Internet Radio program on LA Talk Radio back in 2009 and 2010 when I came across his work and the Sounds of Brazil streaming radio program. Scott is president of the Montage Communications Group. He's the creative director of ConnectBrazil.com, program director for the streaming radio station, The Sounds of Brazil. And Scott is is a recognized national radio personality, a publisher, a journalist, an innovator in in promotion and marketing of Brazilian music and culture to the U.S. audiences. His achievements have been chronicled by the Chicago Sun-Times, the Chicago Tribune, Crane's Business, the Miami Herald, and by Brazilian newspapers O Global and Mão e Mensagem. Scott is a multi-year recipient of the Brazilian International Press Award, which honors excellence in the promotion and advancement of Brazilian culture and the arts. He has received letters of merit from several U.S. state governor's offices for his services to Brazilian communities nationwide. So with that, Scott, hello and welcome to Talk to Brazil. Well, hello, Tom. Great to be with you today. And it's my pleasure. Scott, one thing I want to ask, since we've been and I've been listening to your your Sounds of Brazil, you have this very long history and a fantastic story with your relationship to Brazilian music. Why Brazil? Well, um, it actually started out of um, a friend's vacation back in 1987. Uh, Three of my best buddies and I decided to travel to Rio de Janeiro for the Formula One race at at, uh, Jacques Wapiranga. And uh, I loved the uh, I loved the experience so much. I came back with a suitcase filled with records and no clothes. Um, I've always been a fan of, uh, of music in general and, uh, Brazilian music and, and jazz as I was growing up. So, mm-hmm. um, it just struck a chord with me. And a year later I returned as a reporter to cover the, uh, the first, uh, democratic presidential election, ah. uh, in Brazil. And, uh, things just kind of took their own course after that. Uh, uh-huh. So the Sounds of Brazil started out as a radio show in April of 1992 on a uh, public radio station here in Chicago. Okay. And four months later, we moved from public radio to commercial radio, just as the smooth jazz format was beginning Mm -hmm. to take off. Mm -hmm. And I stayed with uh, Chicago's smooth jazz WNUA for 18 years. Wow. During which time the Sounds of Brazil was regularly ranked as one of the most popular stations for its time slot. So we've done really well with Brazilian music over mm-hmm. the years in bringing it not only to Brazilians who miss that touch of home well before the internet, uh, but also to uh, curious jazz fans who right. were learning more about the music uh, as they listened. Well, you mentioned even not only the Brazilians, but uh, when Internet came along, that really opened up the world to everything, right? Mm -hmm. Music-wise, radio-wise, radio took on a whole different meaning. It did, Um, and so did music streaming. I was tapped by yahoosbroadcast.com to program their Brazilian music channels back uh, in 1999. Mm -hmm. We started up in the year 2000, which, as you know, is early days for the internet and especially for streaming radio. It was early days for everything. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, And it was really the wild, wild west back then. Mm -hmm. But uh, we made an immediate impact, and I stayed with uh, Yahoo until they closed down uh, broadcast.com. And then we moved over to Live 365, where we stayed for another 16 years. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Um, it's always been that way. Today we uh, we uh, work with uh, 15 different streaming channels at AccuRadio.com, which is also based here in Chicago. Okay. Why Chicago? Is Chicago the center of the internet and the radio and this technology? Because I know you're a, so you're an innovator. Is that mm-hmm. the center of innovation for sound? Well, uh, Chicago is known as the second city here in the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it is second in a lot of very important ways. Uh, it's the second largest or the third largest uh, media market in the country. Mm-hmm. It is the second largest market for public relations and advertising companies. Ah. So, uh, And the deal with Chicago is that if it works here, that means it's going to work everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's not It's not like New York or L.A., which has its own sense of trend in business and culture. Right. But uh, Chicago is a bedrock for rubber stamping anything that really works. That's why. In the United States, right? So you're really talking of middle America, and uh, uh, it's, yeah. really, it's really a melting pot of what America is. It, it really is, and uh, the sensibility of, uh, the sounds of Brazil played into that idea. And mm-hmm. I didn't really think of an audience as being Brazilian. I thought of it more like people like me mm-hmm. uh, who would, you know, come to enjoy the music if it were properly presented. Right. And uh, you know, over the years, it's worked really well that way. Oh, and it is properly presented. I, I, uh, I've been following the, the Sounds of Brazil and now your ConnectBrazil.com site. Uh, it's very attractive and really chock full of uh, information uh, and easy to navigate format. And, and it's for anybody. It's it's not for Brazilians. Yeah, it's true. Uh, the website is connectbrazil.com, and I guess the name says it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a lifestyle site. So right. um, unlike other Brazilian music programs and websites, we don't talk about news. We don't talk about presenting an academic view of Brazil or its right. culture. Right. We have kind of a more hands-on, ooh, that looks fun type of attitude. <laughs> and I think that really makes a difference when you're trying to establish relationships with listeners. It is. And, uh, Tom, let me tell you one other thing that I think is kind of interesting for your listeners, too, is <laughs> that over the years we found that Brazilian music is an excellent gateway to making business relationships grow with consumers. Mm -hmm. Not so much for business to business, but B2C works incredibly well when it's uh, introduced through Brazilian music. And it's a format that, on the business side of what I do, has proved to be uh, a very important and successful side of ConnectBrazil.com. And, and that is important. I'm uh, looking at your site right now, and I see one of the things that, that, that helps in that, the Waters of March. Uh, obviously, you put that, and you tie that to, to, to the music and the unknown story, and you, you, you help, help purvey some of what Brazil is about. Uh, because my audience also, Talk to Brazil audience, is, is a non-Brazilian audience. Because I speak to the world, and it's really people who speak English who have some type of an interest in business in Brazil. And many times speaking with everybody uh, and other persons I've interviewed, it's the same thing. They've come here as you did, you know, got off the plane, came for whatever reason. Be Formula One, it could have been for the for a trade show, for anything. And Brazil sort of grew on them as it grew on me. And, and music has always been the attachment. I actually started trying to learn Portuguese through music, trying to listen to the albums and trying to repeat the sounds and figuring out what those sounds were. Um, me too. Um, hasn't worked out so well for me, though. <laughs> <laughs> the verbs get me every time. But well, I you, know well, you sti- well, that's because you still live in Chicago. If you were here, you would be speaking better, without a doubt. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> well, um, one of the things uh, that we're just uh, working up now at ConnectBrazil.com uh, takes that idea of cultural marketing uh, mm-hmm. to the next level, and that's mm-hmm. a lifestyle directory. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It's a directory of business listings uh, in the areas of music and entertainment and travel and cuisine. Right. So it gives people who come to uh, uh, come within the radius of what we do musically or through Connect Brazil's excellent blog stories mm-hmm. uh, the opportunity to explore businesses and uh, get in touch more with culture on their terms. Right and. Uh, you know, I've always felt that that's really important uh, when you're dealing with Brazil, because Brazil, especially uh, so many parts of the country, just literally sell themselves uh, pictures worth a thousand visitors easily. So uh, <laughs> what we're trying to do is is find uh, great lifestyle uh, right. avenues to open up for people who come to us through the music, and, mm-hmm. and it's really working out well. I think they went back to technology and innovation, the streaming, the Internet, it, it's opened up so many different opportunities for businesses in any way, you know, going, coming in the middle. And when you're talking about lifestyle, obviously, the, the communication, people are able to tap in and understand different lifestyles for whatever reason. Where before, well, and, that, and you're the journalist and you know that uh, it was much harder to communicate worldwide in, let's say, 1990. Well, you know, things are moving so rapidly these days that I, I, I think that uh, often businesses that are B2C uh, driven uh, lose focus of the importance of the story. Mm-hmm. And people come to me and they say, well, you know, you run a business, you, but you play music on the radio. And I, and I say, <laughs> yeah. And they say, well, you know, how do you describe what you do? And I, I just say I tell great stories. I'm very good at being able to communicate (laughs) stories. And, you know, one of the little secrets about if you own a business, you might know your story best, but you probably aren't the right person or the best person to tell your story when it comes to making impressions with other people. Right. So that's where Connect Brazil comes in where we tie all of these various uh, marketing and advertising and promotional elements together Mm -hmm. to tell great stories for our clients. And it it really is a big payoff. Uh, Companies today rely and are very concerned about uh, SEO-driven content Mm -hmm. and how well they rank in a search engine and, uh, you know, so many things that become technical and take you away from the emotion of what they do. Right. Um, I can't tell you how many emails I get from Brazilian steakhouses <laughs> where the disclaimer paragraph is longer than their, you know, whatever they're trying to, uh, to promote in that email. Uh-huh. And frankly, it's disturbing to me. Right. right. Uh, so one, you know, we, you and I were talking off air a little bit about right relationship building and and how all of that really has changed over the years. Right. And I think that, that there's a lot of value in companies coming back to the idea of having their story told. Because ah, that's in it. this, it's a, you know, you have, what, on Facebook you have five seconds to make an impression before <laughs> you lose a prospective right. uh, customer. Uh-huh. That's not the case if you get them hooked into a story. It's a, right. if, if you... If you bring them into the story, mm-hmm. then they're going to stay with you, just right. like with your show. You know, you're right. telling me about the uh, uh, the advancement of your program and right. uh, and how you've been able to make it work in this format. And I really mm-hmm. commend you for it. It's a great way to tell stories. No, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, as I mentioned off air, I basically put the Talk to Brazil on a shelf for about two years. And I, I started reviving it. Because persons that I had interviewed several years ago had contacted me and wanted to be interviewed again and suggested other people to be interviewed. And I said, you know, what's happening? And as I dealt back, and when I was through LA Talk Radio, right, I, I have to say uh, I was probably unique as you are in starting something out. So I want to talk, you know, a business in Brazil at the time when I, I spoke with. Uh, the people at LA Talk Radio it was the first one to be to have a radio program not in the studio. I was here in Brazil. The studio was in LA, and I interviewed people all over the world. And it worked. Uh, the only uh, 
thing at that time was it had to be in English. And I wanted it to be in English because I wanted to see, because I felt that there was a lack of content about business in Brazil in English in the world. And you just mentioned that from the Brazilian steakhouses. They can tell great mm-hmm. stories or long stories, but in Portuguese. And yeah. the world, the business world today, and that's not only in the States, the world is English. And I, I found that through Talk to Brazil. So I created this network and relationship. Uh, people from different countries, Brazilians who were out there, Brazilians here who had interest in going out. And that really became the niche market. And I just rediscovered that. I said the, the, the niche market exists as you found that. You have to innovate. You have to update yourself. Uh, but the market's there. And if you tell a story, now you've come to a point, you've made, me, you've made my day today. Because uh, I didn't mention this off the air, but in February I also started now a Portuguese language podcast called BBN Brazil. And that's Brazil wow. with an S. Because what I discovered in this, and you've, you've helped me, uh, you've enlightened me, because I said, well, I have this audience out there in, that speaks English, and they're, they're interested in Brazil. And Brazilians, unfortunately, don't speak English. They speak Portuguese. So what I'm, my strategic change for 2019, and taking from what you just said, I'm now considering myself a cultural crossroad. And my focus will be storytelling. Uh, and we're telling this story of you and your success. And that's really, and I agree with you, that's what people want to hear. Well, that's really true, Tom. And I can't emphasize strongly enough for business leaders who listen to your podcasts, if they do business with consumers, how important it is to have someone tell their story effectively. It really, really is a critical element that's often overlooked in how we plan our marketing and advertising programs. Now, you said you're in Chicago and you're with the, you said it's what's the second of the largest press relations. Yes, Chicago is... Yeah, Chicago. So you, has you're out the, with these people, the, and you're listening, and you're talking to these people. Do you hear that from them as well? Um, no, I don't. Okay. Um, I think that it, uh, the, there are some problems. Uh, first of all, there's a, a generational shift in how things are thought of mm-hmm. and how answers come to them, um, and it's usually technology based. Right. But. Uh, we don't go to a Brazilian steakhouse for the technology. Right. <laughs> we don't. We don't buy a round trip ticket or a one way ticket to Rio for the technology. Mm-hmm. We go there because of the emotion, and right. the emotion is what sells. It's it's you know that old saying, right, Tom? It's sell the sizzle, not the steak. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, and you know these are truisms that. Uh, that stay with us for a reason, no matter what cultural changes or generational shifts occur, because they are ultimate truths. Right. So, um, and I found that to be so, so, so true with uh, the reaction that we get from listeners uh, for 27 years now. Right. Who come to us, and then inevitably I'll get an email or a text or a phone call, and it'll go like this. I can't believe what I'm listening to. I've never heard anything like this. What is this music you're playing, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Even in today's connected age, right. we right. still get plenty of feedback that way. And it's because we make an emotional connection. The music tells its own story, and in doing so, opens up gateways for people to develop relationships with a business or a cultural event or anything you wish. And I agree with you wholeheartedly there. And, and music is the background, it's the backbone, I think, of relationships. It, it, it's hard to go into a restaurant or sit in, a, in an event where there's not background music. Uh, it's hard to get into an elevator in some places without having music. So, uh, well, that's true. Yeah. It's, it's a natural yeah. connector. I was, um, I was reading a report recently that, uh, that broke down how important music is to advertisers Mm -hmm. in the Latin American markets. And uh, I think Brazil ranked 
second in Latin America in terms of the importance of music as a way to to help sell the message. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's that wasn't surprising to me at all. And uh, you know, I could cite many examples of how that works, but. Um, uh, this is a chance for me to kind of talk a little bit about what I do, and I really do appreciate it, Tom. Thank you so much. No, and so, it's good for people to hear what you do. Uh, well, I'd like to <laughs> offer an invitation to business listeners who are out there and would like to learn more about how I think and what I do to reach out to me. I'll right. be happy to sit and talk with you or converse or, or uh, you know, trade by email, whatever you'd like. Um, but it would be great to share stories and mm -hmm. to learn a little bit more about your listeners. And maybe uh, I can get some questions answered about what I need to know, too. Help sure. make me better. <laughs> well, we're going we're gonna to find a way to make that all happen. Obviously, uh, we're going to do uh, as much as we can to promote. And I, I just found on your connectbrazil.com, Talk to Brazil is still there on your directory from way back oh, sure. then. Yeah, so... Mm -hmm. And it's, it's one of those things I, we can't, you mentioned the SOE, the SEO uh, driven content, and we really can't get away from that today. But one of the things that also is my driver in voice is more and more I'm reading and hearing about voice generated content is going to be the search of the future. So if we're not being searched, if we can't be searched by voice, we may not be searched at all. We may not be found. That's true. Um, and it's a constantly shifting landscape for SEO. So critical today because of how mobile-driven uh, technology changes mm -hmm. search results depending on your past history of interests and your geographic location. Even the time of day and your exact location can That's change. That's true the the results in a search engine uh, query so um uh gosh it's like a black science but honestly if you're telling great stories then seo follows even stronger when you develop it uh and the the keywords that that you can surround uh say a blog post or a web page or a landing page at your website all of those come to play when you have great content that really captures the reader's imagination, or if they're listening to us on one of our many st streaming channels or right. radio shows, uh, mm -hmm. the music does the same thing. No, and that's true. And I, I know you dominate the hashtag Brazil with the Z. Uh, and when you're talking about listening and the sounds, uh, you have always been up there. So. And that's the way of oh, keeping you. it there. You know, it's, it's, you know, constantly talking about or constantly purveying the same image and, and, and where, and that's what you do. Well, I appreciate that. Um, uh, Connect Brazil relaunched um, just about a year ago uh -huh. on the first day of summer 2018. Um, and uh, we have just relaunched the lifestyle directory here uh, about two months ago. Okay. And uh, I've really built the site for the purpose of being able to help other businesses grow and to uh, do a much better job with their conversion rate for client interaction, uh, a great way to help them stay in touch with customers they may not have heard from in a while because they've right. been wooed away or have been mm -hmm. busy doing other things. Mm -hmm. All of these things come into play with the, the idea of behind connectbrazil.com. The lifestyle directory is going to be an important part of what we do going forward. And uh, again, I'd be happy to talk with any of your listeners about how we might be able to help them down the road. Now, thank you, uh, Scott. I want to thank you for your time. And I want to uh, assure you that we're going to be back talking about this again in the future. And we're going to Anytime. delve into certain aspects of what you've said in, in lifestyle. And I think that will be a a conversation in itself uh, to help open that up of what are the different lifestyles today and we're talking I want to talk about like 2025 right what are the future mm -hmm. lifestyles because lifestyles are changing uh, the, the generation uh, uh, the forward looking of, of the different generations are different because I have a lifestyle you have a lifestyle 
but as you mentioned, the technology sector, they have a completely different one. And so well, that's we, ha true. we have to cut that in different slices to see what it all looks like. Yeah, you got to wonder how many CEOs of Brazilian churrascarias are wondering how they're going to deal with millennials who'd rather have delivery or carry out. <laughs> well, I think that's everybody. Uh, because the yeah. millennials, that's one of the things happening right now. The, they don't want to go out. Uh, well, it will make it easier to get a table in 2025. <laughs> or not. Uh, so, well, you can get a table, but the restaurant might not be there. <laughs> well, that's what Connect Brazil is here to help address. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm just one of many options out there, but um, one with an interesting background in terms of using cultural marketing right. to affect good business. And I, uh, I think that that's really good. When you normally hear the phrase cultural marketing or cultural promotion, you think um, you know, college campuses or uh, performing arts centers or things right. like that. And they, boy, they play such an important role. But it also is a great way to position a business goal. No, that's true. And I agree with you. And I think that that's your headline on, on your LinkedIn page. And uh, mm -hmm. that's that's the attraction. That's the attraction. OK, Scott. Well, again, I want to thank you for sharing your afternoon with us there from Chicago. Uh, even though, as you mentioned before, it's a rainy afternoon, but uh, you're in your springtime heading towards your summertime and now you're going into your your summer lifestyle right well i, I hope so we had two inches of snow three days ago so <laughs> you never know it's chicago it, you, you never it, know it can go up and down but and boy you always know it's, uh, it's yeah. always going to be windy right so windy yeah beautiful city though <laughs> um a lot like rio in the summertime it's just uh, everything builds off the lake lake michigan and uh if you haven't been to the Chicago uh, lakefront, uh, by all means, come to Grant Park and, and soak it in. All the museums are right off the lake shore, so you can walk between the museums and restaurants and orchestra halls just a few blocks off the way there. So, yeah, there's a lot to do. And, and check your connectbrazil.com site to see where to sit down and have a nice meal. It's right there on your phone. <laughs> Very good. All right. Tom, thank you so much for inviting me to be part of your show today, and, and I'd be happy to talk with you anytime down the road, too. Great. And we'll be doing that. So thanks again, Scott. And I want to also thank all of our listeners and our audience because you're the key to our success. And we invite you to check out the TalkToBrazil.com website. You'll be able to find Scott Adams on LinkedIn. That's S-C-O-T-T-A-D-A-M-S. And as we just mentioned, Connect Brazil. That's C O N N E C T B R A Z I L dot com. And thank you for your audience. Remind everyone that today's program was brought to us by Focus MI Market Intelligence. And Focus MI specializes in market research for the Brazilian agriculture market. More about them on their site, which is F O C U S M I dot com. You can always send your suggestions or comments or find me at Tom at TalkToBrazil.com and join our Talk to Brazil group on LinkedIn and follow our discussions. Remember, when you talk to Tom, you talk to Brazil and the world. Goodbye and thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to Tom Riach on Talk to Brazil, the business connector to Brazil.